Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and it's time for our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 351. Got lots to do today, lots and lots and lots to do today. We are playing with the new Simply Defined dies. We have, I'm going to show you Simply Botanical that released just a couple days ago for June. I've got colored pencils and you may already own colored pencils. I've got parchment vellum. I've got a, a bonus, <laughs> a manufacturer's oopsie to me became my bonus to you. Wahoo could chew. We've got winner winner to talk about. There's a lot to do in today's YouTube class and you may want to take notes because we are playing with vellum and vellum can be a little tricky sometimes it's tricky to find an adhesive to put it down it's tricky to color it vellum does not like to be wet it does not like water it, it curls like you can't believe but today we're going to play with it and i have a new collection of pergamano dyes now before i get there i'm going to tell you i may look a little different <laughs> i may not i don't know yet i was watching american idol love my American Idol, love my voice. Don't get me wrong. I don't choose between the two. I, I, I love all of them. So American Idol, because of COVID-19, had to have their contestants do their songs from home. And they would do them like on an iPhone. And then there was this big ring light behind them. And I'm like, man, they look good. That light looks good on them. <laughs> And you have to understand, I do my YouTubes here in Mr. SMS's office. With all the space that we have, including in the store, I am I am allotted six feet here on this little table and one little rack for my supplies. Doesn't matter that I'm the owner. <laughs> Makes no difference. This is what I've been allotted in the way of space. So I, unfortunately, I don't have like a, a formal set. I know a lot of manufacturers who do YouTubes for their products have a built-in set at their company, or a lot of YouTubers have like an amazing craft room, or they build a set and they've got the lighting and multiple cameras. And for me, it's just me, you, and my Sony Handycam until today. Now, they had this big ring light behind the contestants at American Idol shining in on them and making them look so good. And I was talking to my friend Leslie about it and about how that light just made them look fabulous. And she's like, well, I have a little one. It's only about this big. It's on a little tripod. And uh, I'm like, this big? And she says, yeah. She said, I use it when I Zoom because now meetings are held by Zoom. And the first thing I thought was, you light yourself for Zoom meetings? Oh, gosh, I love you for that, Leslie. <laughs> have sent Michael, my husband, the information about the little light that she bought. And it wasn't much more than $15 at Best Buy or Staples or something like that. But it's this tiny little ring light. And it does like three different light colors like daylight, warm and cool. And you can uh, adjust it dims. It's got this little remote. I mean, for 15 bucks, it's the best. It's on a tripod. Best thing ever. And apparently I'm allowed to have it because it doesn't take up any more room in Mr. SMS's office. So he bought it for me. So I'm playing with it. It's on right now, but wait, okay, here's the little remote. So this is what, this is what I look like right now. Don't know if it's any better. That's what I look like on a normal basis. <laughs> this is my normal lighting, which is no lighting. This is my new lighting, but this is at half power because if I go up, I don't know. <laughs> is that too strong? I have no idea. I've never seen me on camera. So I'm gonna have to actually look and see what I look like there. I'm dimming it down, but then I could change the light. I could have it there. Now it's more blue and I could make that way more blue. Oh, goes with my, my sweatshirt or I could go warm and then I could dim that down or I could go back to daylight and I could dim that down or I could make it brighter. I don't know. I'm getting used to it to see what I think. So we're just going to play. <laughs> it can't hurt. Although I have to say, if, if it makes, if lighting like this makes everybody look awesome, 
I think we all should have a little light that we carry with us all the time. And that way, <laughs> no matter where we are, we're well lit. So thank you, Michael. Thank you, Mr. SMS, for my new toy. I'm just going to play with it a little bit and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so now I'm going to move on. I have got winner, winner, chicken dinner to talk about. Are you ready to hear if you've won a $25 gift card to Scrapbooking Made Simple? Because if you posted on our last YouTube, you went into the running and I bet these two people never thought that they would win. Just a reminder, even if this light makes me look 20 years younger, no comments about my personal attributes, not about how much I talk, not about my laugh, not about my, <laughs> my potential need for Botox, uh-uh. <laughs> But what you can talk about is your kids, your grandkids, your spouse, your family, your work, your fur babies, your church. You can share great news with us or if you need to, you can share some sad news with us because I think you will be surprised at how many SMS peeps will post well wishes and thoughtful condolences if you are going through a hard time. We are a family and that's what you do. So <laughs> nothing about the nothing about the attributes, my physical appearance, but anything else is fine. We approve the comments. You have to be a YouTube user, then you have to subscribe to my channel, Scrapbooking Made Simple, and then you can post a comment on the YouTube. And next week I'll have two new winners. So I'm guessing that the two winners I have right now. Oh, see, there's the light. Can you see it? <laughs> there's the light. The two winners I have right now, it's the most tech savvy I've ever been having this light. They probably thought that they were never going to win, but they did. This is their turn. All right. Our first winner, winner chicken dinner is Jane. Jane Sprando. Hello, Jane. How are you? Jane, is that you? Because if it is, you are a winner, winner chicken dinner. Wahoo, ka -choo. But Jane, you are not alone. Are you ready? Our next winner, oh, she's got a very common name. <laughs> I, I'm almost a little nervous. <laughs> I'm afraid that all of you who have the same name are gonna jump up saying I'm a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Before you do that, <laughs> and before you call your husband and your kids and your mom and say, she announced my name on YouTube, Wahoo Kachoo, go to your account and make sure there's a $25 credit put in there. So I'm sure you're, you're sure you're the right well, you're the right Sherry Smith. <laughs> now you can see my concern. Hello, Sherry Smith. This is how Sherry sm uh, smells, spells her name. <laughs> and I will be sure that it is applied into the right account. So if you are another Sherry Smith that spells it S-H-E-R-R-Y, not with an I, not with a C, not with one R, but S-H-E-R-R-Y, Smith. Well, run to your account right now at scrapbookingmadesimple.com and see if you are indeed our winner, winner, chicken dinner. If there's $25 in your account, then call your husband, your kids, your mom, your dad, your business partner, your dog, your cat, <laughs> the bird, whoever it is that, that, that is right there that will share in your excitement. All right, so we do have to do, you're a winner, chicken dinner, you're a winner, chicken dinner, wahoo, cut you, for you. <laughs> now, this YouTube, I have a, I have an oopsie that happened. A manufacturer made a mistake on my product, which now becomes a, a bonus to you. <laughs> I don't know if I said that properly, but there was an oopsie that happened and somebody else's oopsie is your wahoo kachu. I guess that's the best way to explain it. I am going to be using vellum today, parchment vellum. And parchment vellum is normally used for a craft called pergamano. What is pergamano? Oh, if you haven't seen it, Google it. It's beautiful. It is taking parchment vellum, which is a heavy, heavy weight vellum and using piercing tools and emboss, embossing stylists and, and white ink to make the, pe, uh, the, the vellum almost look like lace. It's beautiful. It is time consuming. I mean, you can take up to 
a week or two just to make one card front because you are you've got a pattern that you're working with and you're using bunches of different types of piercing tools to 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 make the perforations so it looks like lace love pergamano but it does require parchment vellum and so i brought in parchment vellum a while ago because this is now my third collection of pergamano they are very popular collections and i want to remind you that simply defined is is limited when they're gone they're gone they are and well some people cancel their orders and then they're back again but i can't reorder so my Pergamano collections are always called Nana's something. There was Nana's Friendship and uh, uh, Nana's Garden, and this one's Nana Sampler. So if you want to look for any of the older Pergamano dyes, you can to see what's left, and just Google Nana's, I guess, in, or on our website, search under Nana's. But this is Nana's Sampler, and they they sell out. They tend to sell out quickly. But you need that parchment vellum. So I had brought it in to go with my first collection of Pergamano. Everything went great. Vellum came in fabulous. Then we sold out. Eventually sold out. Reordered it. Took a long time to get it back in. And then when it came back in, unbeknownst to me, it came in at the wrong weight. It was super light. Parchment vellum is heavy and thick, and it feels. The paper is just rich feeling. And and we started to ship it out. And I picked it up, I'm like, this is wrong. I mean, I literally picked it up and I felt it, this is wrong. And so got on the horn to the manufacturer. I said, we got a problem here. I, I, need, I need my vellum, not this vellum. This is everybody else's vellum. <laughs> so they checked and they had indeed supplied the wrong vellum. So they had to, so I have all of the lightweight vellum, which is perfectly fine, it's just vellum. But then they had to replace it with my, my heavyweight parchment vellum. So I've got all of this, which I was credited back for, I'm not paying for, and they don't want it back, and I have what is right. So anybody who has ordered parchment vellum in the past month or so, where you got the wrong vellum and we're gonna be sending you out the correct vellum. If you ordered one pack, we'll send you a pack. If you ordered two packs, we'll send you two. Whatever you ordered, we're going to replace it with the right stuff, and then you just keep this as a gift on us. So today, we're going to bundle them. And oh, <laughs> when you when you buy the the heavyweight vellum, you're going to get the lightweight vellum for free, and you'll have both. But you'll see why you need that heavyweight vellum for what we're using it in today. It's it's just that important. You can't do what I'm going to do with any other type of vellum. It must be heavy, heavy weight. And it is so hard to find these days. Manufacturers just aren't doing it anymore. So Pergamano is becoming almost like a lost art, which is kind of a shame. So I've got that for you. You don't have to do anything if you buy the heavyweight vellum. It's already in a bundle with the lightweight vellum and it's already at a simply defined price which is $7.99 so you're going to get both packs for $7.99. $7.99 is our price on our heavyweight vellum. You get 10 sheets which I think is substantially less than you would find it anywhere else should you be able to find it. Over in the UK it's a little more uh, readily available but I, again I still think it's at a higher price. So I've got that. I've got sparkling paper I've got dyes I've got colored pencils I think we are going to tilt down and we are going to get started for today and I am going to start with showing you simply botanical for June it released a couple days ago but I've got beautiful samples for you so I'm just going to whip through those pretty quickly and then we're going to get going on today's class all right down I go <laughs> good to see you <laughs> I hope it was good to see me we'll have to see what I look like <laughs> I feel so high tech with this light. <laughs> but like I said, it's me and my Sony Handycam. <laughs> okay, is that good? Maybe down just a little bit more. All right, I feel like my sweatshirt's gonna get in the way, but okay, how pretty is this? This is the newest collection of Simply Botanical. Now, Simply Botanical is a partnership between Hero Arts and Scrapbooking Made Simple. It is one die and stamp set per month in a combination that has never been released before. 
Love it, Claire made this card and she did just a beautiful job. Here is the actual product. So here are the stamps and here are the dies and we do it value priced for $14.39. You get the entire set for $14.39. And again, it's a partnership between Hero Arts and Scrapbooking Made Simple under my brand, Simply Botanical. Again, these are also limited and they do sell out rather quickly. So if you love it, grab it. And if you don't, don't. It's, I, not everything is for everybody, but I do want to show you some of the samples that were made using Simply Botanical for June. Okay, so this one Claire made. I'm just going to go through them. How pretty is that? Simple, easy. Love this one. So the background paper was made using the stamp. And then again here, so no dies at all. This was all just stamped. Didn't use the dies at all. The ribbon is my simply defined seam binding ribbon. Look at this. This was done with gold embossing powder. Ooh, right? Beautiful, right? Ooh. Again, no die cutting on this one at all, just using the stamps. And sweet and simple with just a little touch of glitter. Just a little touch of glitter on there. Just winking at you, just on the outline. Simple and easy and beautiful. And look at that one. Absolutely gorgeous. Made with the stamp. Simple and easy to do. And this was made with shimmer inks. So when you, oh, there we go. You get a little shimmer and shine when you rotate it. So this is Simply Botanical for June. And if you're collecting the Simply Botanical collection, well, this would be the next one in line. A lot of negative space. I love negative space. Negative space is where it's just open. It's just bare because it really draws your eye in. And then my last one is here. And we did a heat emboss on a mirror paper. So Simply Botanical. Partnership between Hero Arts and Scrapbooking Made Simple. Value priced at $14.39 for this set. You get everything you see and when they're gone, they're gone. Okay, let's move on. I think I'm going to start with... Let's look at the vellum first. Okay, that's a good thing. Let's talk about the vellum. So vellum. I have two packs. They look absolutely identical. This pack is the lightweight pack and I know because when I lift it it's lightweight and it has the original SKU number that we were selling the heavyweight for. When I realized that there was a mistake I had to give a new, we had to assign a new SKU number but I'm going to take a piece of each out. So I'm going to take a couple pieces of this because I'm going to be working with this. And let's take out the lightweight. Nothing wrong with the lightweight vellum. It just won't do what the heavyweight will. So. You can hear the difference. You can actually maybe even see the difference in, well, you can see that this one is not as trans, 
lucent as the lightweight is. So the lightweight you can see through far more. So if I put it on top of here, you're going to be able to see through that far more than there. This is much heavier, much thicker. If I were to take this and fold it, you get a nice score, absolutely, a beautiful score. But if I take this, oh, you can even hear it cut differently. Do you hear that? Hold on, shh. Much heavier. So if I take this and I bend it, what I get is a much wider, not wider, but whiter, the color crease than I do here. There's a big difference between these two and you can see the difference in, in the weight. It's like playing with 65 pound paper versus a uh, 200 pound paper. <laughs> That's how big of a difference it is. It's enormous. And with my dies, I can't use this. It does not give me the crispness and the ability to emboss it the way I need to emboss it. I need that heavyweight paper, which is why Pergamano, they use the heavyweight paper. So I wanna put that, I don't wanna accidentally grab that. So simply to find dies, I have six of them. Oh, you know what? I think I'm just going to pull them out and show them to you really quick. One, two, three, four, okay. So I've got six new dies. They are based around a Pergamano idea. They're always based around a Pergamano idea. I wanted to make Pergamano easy for you, where you get that beautiful, lacy, elegant, embossed with vellum look without having to do all the work. So six new dies. They are $13.99 each and they're full A2 size. However, if you were to buy the I Want It All bundle, and it has to be the I Want It All bundle where you get all six, they're for $59.99, so 10 bucks a die. Nowhere are you gonna get a die for 10 bucks like that, honestly. So, great value, but if there's just one or two that you love, then just buy the open stock, and if it's not for you, then just pass. You never know, there's always another something coming down the turnpike, that is for sure. Today, I think I'm gonna start with this die here. And what's important about this die is that it has both die cutting features and embossing features. So this is a wafer style die. It's named wafer style because well, it's as thin as a wafer. And around the edges, you will see a little ridge around the edges. But then you get to some places where, see there's little ridges around the roses, but here around the leaves, there isn't any ridges. It's just cut into, you don't have that little raised ridge going around those leaves. That is considered an embossing folder. You don't have any ridges around the little ribbon area going up on the sides, no. You have a, it, uh, an edge here and an edge there to cut it out, but nothing to do the detail. When you have dies like that, that means it's an embossing or a stenciling feature, which means you have an opportunity to do more than just die cut with it. These dies that I've got were designed to look more Pergamano-ish so that you get that beautiful, elegant look without having to do all the work. 
And again, it requires a very heavy vellum. So I'm going to take and I'm going to cut my vellum out. Now I have to die cut this. I need to die cut it out. I need to, to, to get that, that piece out and I'm going to be using today my Sizzix Big Shot machine. So Sizzix Big Shot machine, for those who you've never seen it before, it's a die cutting machine. It's got a little, it's got a little handle over here that you just kind of, you crank it through. They do make ones that are machines that are um, motorized. I do know their switch machine. I know a lot of you have been asking about their switch machine, which is a new machine. It's a bigger machine and you push a button, but it's for wider dies. It has been postponed, I believe until next year. So just if you were thinking about waiting and holding out for a switch machine, you may wanna just hang tight. Now with the machine, I have a multi-purpose platform. This is the small version. Your machine might have come with a large version. It makes no difference. And the new Big Shot machines, they come with a, a base plate and one shim no longer connected. However you get your machine, whatever multi-purpose platform you have, it's fine. They all work. Will this die work with a cuddle bug? Yes. Will it work with a Gemini? Yes. Will it work with a Platinum 6, yes, a Platinum 8, yes, a Vagabond, yes, a Fabby machine, yes, a Vintage machine, yes, a Big Kick, yes. What die cutting machine do you have? If it will take a die this wide, you're going to be just fine. So a little side kick, not so much, because that only lets you do about two and a half inches. Now, for my dies, my dies tend to be more intricate as opposed to it just being like a, a frame die, just a circle and you can put your hand through it, my dies tend to be a little more intricate. So they need what's called a precision platform, precision base plate. This precision base plate is the third version. If you've got version one or version two, you really don't need this unless you want it. This is a want, not necessarily a need. Oh, there's my light. <laughs> And there's the camera. <laughs> See, it's just a little camera. So, um, so, but this, this plate, if you are cutting intricate dies, and I don't care who manufactures the die, it could be a Spellbinder, it could be another Sizzix die, it could be a Crafter's Companion could die, whoever makes intricate dies, and you're having trouble getting it out, it's all the little pieces aren't falling out, you need one of these if you're using a Big Shot machine, a standard Big Shot machine. So, I'm going to take my multi-purpose platform and I'm going to keep it completely closed. If I've got the newer machine that has just a base plate and a shim, I'm going to put that shim on top. I'm going to, no matter what I've got, I'm going to keep it completely closed, stacked everything I have. I'm going to take my precision base plate. I'm not going to be, I don't want to be able to read the directions. Here's the directions on how to use it. Fine print, talk about a lot of fine print, holy smokes, artichokes. <laughs> if you can read that, and you're about to put your die and die cut, you've got to stop. You need, whether it be the black metal or the matte black metal or the new chrome one, you need that, that, that metal facing up, facing you. That's super important. Then you're gonna put down your vellum or your paper, whatever it is you're using, and your die on top of it. Last things last, you're gonna take an old yucky cup plate. Your plates will eventually look like this and they will eventually crack. Don't throw them away until they crack. You can still use them. Do not put them in your microwave or the oven to try and get them unwarped. No, no, no. These are plastic that will give off fumes. So they're a consumable. They last as long as you, you can rotate them back and forth to help the wear go even better. But, um, but eventually you will have to replace them. This goes right on top and I'm using an old yucky cut plate because the pressure that I'm going to have because of this metal precision base plate is more than normal and it will leave, if you have a do not cut plate, it will leave an indent. Will it harm your do not cut plate? No, but if you like your do not cut plate to look pristine, you, you're going to want to use an older plate. Now I'm going to roll this through, I'm going to send it through and you may hear creaks and cracks. It's okay. Don't stop. 
The only time you stop is if you're trying to push it through so hard and it won't go. So if I'm trying to get this through, I'm trying to send it through and it, it's doing this. It won't let me roll it any further. Then you've got the sandwich wrong, the platform wrong. It's too thick. Don't force it. But if it's rolling through just fine and you hear some creaks and cracks, a few little creaks and cracks, not bad. It's okay, keep going. Okay, let's see what we've got. Isn't that nice when all the little pieces fall out? <laughs> Doesn't that just make your heart happy? <laughs> okay. All right, so let's just wipe this right onto Mr. SMS's floor. That's what you get for only giving me a little tiny space to do this. <laughs> no, I'll vacuum. Well, we'll vacuum. Somebody will vacuum. Elena usually <laughs> will come in and vacuum. <laughs> All right, and maybe a piece of black paper. So this is what we've got which is beautiful all on its own. It truly is. But can you see that the detail, there's detail in the die. Look at that detail. But it didn't, it didn't translate over into the die cut. And remember, that's because I had mentioned that where there's no cut lines is an embossing feature. So to get that look, that's where the Pergamono comes in. I want to add all of this detail here. I want to add those leaves. Right now, you can't even tell there's leaves, but here you can see them as plain as day, but not there. I want to add that detail in. And this is, again, where the Pergamono part comes in because normally you would sit there and, and you would have a pattern and you would have to implement tools and piercings to get that detail in. We're going to speed up the process a whole lot. <laughs> so to do this, you do need a gush mat or a, um, a mouse pad can work. It depends upon how, how, how um, dense it is. Um, if you've got one of my gush pads, it works perfectly. If you've got one of the Doris stamp pads, it works great. And that is an important thing. Then I'm going to put this die back in place. Get that little piece out. Zoop. Do I have all the little pieces out? Okay, I'm going to put that die back in place. So it kind of slips in, the die cut, the vellum any piece of paper you're doing, it kind of just fits right back in and then it kind of locks itself into place. And what some people think is that you would take this, turn it over and start working from the front. No, we need to think opposite. We need to think backwards. I'm going to take this. See the reason why I told you you might need to jot this down or take notes? I'm going to take this and with my vellum still in it, I'm going to lay it down upside down. Then I'm going to take a stylus. How many of you have one of these from time gone by, right? And if not, don't worry, we've got them on sale. They're about like $2.89. You really would like a stylus with two tips. One that is a medium to a large size tip right here. And then, most important, a tiny little ball at the end. So we're not going to be using a light box. You don't have to use a light box. So you might have used these with a light box years ago and a stencil. You're going to pull this out and we're going to use it again. I've die cut my die with my parchment weight vellum. I've turned it upside down so then I can see all the little areas that I want to go in and detail out. Anywhere I can see red coming through that, see this is open, all those pieces fell out. I've still got vellum here. 
I need to add all of that detail and it's just easy as one, two, three. I'm going to take my, my stylus and with that smallest end, the smallest end, I'm going to go in there and let's build out this flower here or this leaf here. I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to go around and outline the opening. Don't worry, I'll pull it up and show you. I'm just going to outline the opening. So on this leaf right here, I have taken my smallest size of my stylus and I just went in and kind of outlined around the opening. It will take you a little time to get used to how hard to push. This is metal. This is paper. Can you push so hard that your, your stylus will go through your, your paper, your vellum? Yes, but this is very hardy vellum and it will not take you long to figure out how long or how much pressure you can apply without causing any damage. Now I've gone around the outline of these of this one leaf. Then I'm going to take my bigger ball and I'm going to go and fill it all in. I'm going to go through those little areas and I'm going to press down and I'm going to fill it in with my little stylus. Okay, now let's do let's do another one. So I'm going to outline where the vellum is and I can't see all the way through where it did not fall out. That's where I know I need to use my stylus to add the dimension. So I'm still using my little one because I'm just outlining some of these. Then I'm going to take my bigger ball and go in there and give a good press. And what you will see is that the vellum turns white. It turns this bright shade of white. And that's what we're looking for, is that beautiful bright shade of white. So my bright shade of white is there because when I pull this out, I have now started to add the detail that you couldn't see before. There's the detail. And there it is. And the reason why we're doing it upside down is because as I push my stylus into my pad, it is adding an embossing feature. These are now raised they're now dimensional. You can feel them. If I were doing this, and I was doing it from the top down, so I had my die and my paper, and I put it this way and started to go in, you would be debossing your vellum. And I wanted that embossed feel, not a debossed feel. I don't want it to go down and be concave. I want it stand up to give dimension and you can feel it. And it's that thick vellum that gives you the opportunity to have it go white and hold that embossing. So over here, so I've slipped it back into place. I'm just gonna take my small little stylist end and go around and just outline those openings. And 
outline those openings. And then I'm going to take the bigger end the, and go in there and add that pressure to change it all to white and to add that embossing feature. So you can't have a stylus that's too big. I know when you're, if you're doing roses like Susan's Gardens roses, some of the stylus tips are really big. You've got to keep it to a medium and small, which is why I've chosen the multi-craft um, stylus tool. One, I like the price. <laughs> and two, it's the right size. Okay. So now I've done this side and that side. And when I turn it over, again, now you're starting to see the detail come through. But remember, I've got here to play with. Let's just slip it right back in. And that's the nice thing about the, the vellum and, and heavyweight paper is that you can slip it in and out of your die again and again and again so that you can flip it over, see if, what, if you're done and put it back, flip it over, take a look at it, put it back. So what if I did, um, let's do this side. So I'm gonna go in there and just Go around and go in here and go around. And just outline the opening. Just take my stylus right around and just outline it like I was tracing it. Just that opening, just putting that outline in. Then I'm gonna take my my bigger tip and go in and fill that space in. And you will see the paper go white. You will see the vellum turn to a white. There's no question about it. And you can put a pretty good amount of pressure with this vellum. You might poke through the first time or two until you get it down but I promise it will, you will get the feel for it. Okay. So now I've done this side right here. And again, it's starting to put the detail in. And it doesn't take long. <laughs> I mean, really, if I sat here and did this, I would have this done in just a matter of minutes. Let's take it all the way to the top. Take it all the way to the top. Put my die back in place. Take my smallest end, kind of trace around the opening that I'm going to fill in. Take my ball and go. Ha, ah, can you see it starting to come to life? Can you see the design element coming through with just vellum and a stylus? We haven't used any color at all. But you say, okay, Stacy, that's nice. But what if I don't want to do that all the time? Maybe, maybe I don't want to, to have a vellum-y look all the time. Or maybe I want to use paper. Can I color? Or maybe I want to color vellum. How do I color vellum? There are lots of ways to color vellum, but one of the most important things to remember is to not get it wet. I wonder if I have a mister in here. Have I any mister? Oh, I don't see one. 
Okay. One of the most important... Oh, wait. Ho oh, ho. Does it have anything in it? Like a drop. Okay. Vellum and water. They do not like each other. The vellum will start to curl and curl and curl and curl. <laughs> you can't get vellum wet. It just is, it's not happy. Look at that. And it will continue to curl and curl and curl. That's vellum and water. And I was, I mean, I literally had no water left. I barely spritzed it. So vellum needs to stay dry. So how do you, how do you color something when it needs to stay dry and most inks are wet? Well, you can play with alcohol ink. Absolutely, you can play with, look at that. It's just gonna, it's just gonna get worse. It's just gonna curl until it, Okay, oh, and see, I got this side wet, <laughs> and now, and that was just from being down here. There's some water down here. And it's going to curl and curl and curl. Okay, so what do you do when you want to color something and it's vellum? Again, you can use alcohol inks. You can paint with them, and because alcohol evaporates like that, it doesn't cause the vellum to curl. There, there are techniques to be done. You can use palette painting to, to um, paint vellum. You need to be careful with how much water you're using, but we have done different things with vellum over the years on how to color it. You also can use colored pencils, and they are one of the easiest ways to color vellum. Now, if I wanted to color this, I could pull out my colored pencil. So the colored pencils I'm using today, I can't even pronounce it. I'm not even going to try. Usually we use Tombow colored pencils, but I found a company called Royal Talons in Germany, and they are a fine art dealer, and they make beautiful, beautiful products. And so they sent me these, and Claire went, oh my gosh. So, um, <laughs> so I'm using them today and we have a 12, a 24, and a 36 pack. But if you already have pencils, do you need more colored pencils? No, you don't. Use the ones you have and see if they're going to work for you. Are these watercolor pencils? No, they're not watercolor pencils. You're not gonna put this anywhere near any kind of water at all. These are straight colored pencils. If your tin, no matter who it's from, says watercolor anywhere on it, those are not the same pencils. They are different and do different things and will not behave the same way. You gotta use the right tool for the right job. So basic colored pencils, although these are not basic, they're beautiful. Now, again, I'm still upside down. There's my die, there's my vellum, I'm still upside down. I can take my pencil and color in what I see. Now I can't very well color where the roses are because that part of the vellum already fell out. But I can color here. And why am I coloring on the back side and not the front side? Well, I want it to have a very smooth look. And I also want it to have a slight emboss look. So if I color it from the back side, I'm able to smooth the color out and give that, that little emboss look when we flip it over. So I'm just taking my colored pencil and filling in the space, just like I was on a coloring book. 
okay. So that's where I'm at. But I told you I want the look to be really smooth and soft. Best way to do that is what you've been doing all along. You were playing with your Gamsol. What's Gamsol? It's also known as Mineral Spirits. Um, this is from Arc on Wild and Friends and Inky Antics. It's, it makes colored pencils do magic. Let me take a piece of paper. So those who have never seen colored pencils before can see the magic I'm talking about. So I'm gonna put this to the side for just a moment and I'm gonna take a colored pencil. And when you use it on paper, it looks just like crayon. Okay, that's not so smooth and beautiful. But the minute you introduce Gamsol or a mineral spirit and a stubby, this is a piece of compressed paper to make a stubby. It's what I'm going to use to make it smooth out. And the Gamsol, you can see the Gamsol going on the stub. You can see the change of color as the paper is absorbing it. You don't want to get Gamsol and put your stubby directly into it. Because this is so porous, it will go and suck it all up. I like the Inky Antics one because it's got the little sponge on top to control how much Gamsol you're using. But if you've got a bottle from time gone by, by all means, get yourself a little cup and put a couple, uh, a, a little um, uh, cotton ball in there, cotton ball in there, and put a little of the Gamsol in and then dip it that way. You don't wanna waste your Gamsol. You only wanna use what you need. Now I'm gonna take this And I'm gonna bring it over here. And because it's a waxed based pencil, that's what colored pencils are, a wax based pencil, the Gamsol without heat, without um, toxic fumes, it melts the wax giving you a completely different look. This is the soft look I'm going for versus the crayon-like look that I'm going for. And when you're playing with them and you want to shade something, you literally just pull that color out. We use colored pencils and Gamsol a lot. It's an easy way to color. And it's an easy way to get a highlight, a mid-tone, and a shadow without having to do too much effort. So, when I bring back my dye, that I have colored in with colored pencils on the back side, still in my die. I've got my vellum die cut. Vellum doesn't like water. Can't use water colored pencils, no, no, no. But the Gamsol dries so quickly that I can go in there, add a little bit of Gamsol to my, my gown, I need to get a new bottle. And just go over it so that it smooths out. In fact, I can use a smaller one. Well, now you know it's an SMS, it's a Stacy. It's a Stacy YouTube, they're the fire engines. I'm just gonna go in there and just go over it and just kind of smooth it out. So it doesn't look, ooh, doesn't look so much like a pencil. Do I want it against the white or the black? I don't know. Then you can see it. It's soft. There's no question about it. It's not red, it's red. 
and it goes with the feeling of how pretty the white is. But if you want to color, you can. Can you color from the front? Yes, you can. Just know that you're going to concave your vellum as opposed to having it more embossed. It's going to be a debossed image. And that's okay too. It's however makes your heart happy. Um, let's take it against... Well, let me finish all the way to the top. Let me just finish all the way to the top. So I'm going to slip this right back on in here. And I've got my pencil and I'm just going to finish, finish to the top. I'm actually even going over some of the white that I did. Pencil in there. There we go. And let's just smooth this out. And really, it's that fast. Okay, smoothed. Oh, went a little bit too much. Yep, went a little high. But I went all the way to the top. So you can color. And then you can come back, put it back in, let it kind of click into place, and finish off your finish off your design. You have options. If you have a squishy and a knock knock and color core paper. You can emboss this with a, after you've die cut, you can use a squishy and a knock knock and then sand it and those embossing features will come up. Switch my ball so I can get a nice good white element in there. And bring it over here. And just kinda, I'm not so much coloring or I'm using the small one, for anything more than really just kind of outlining the the opening that I see. Oh, and I went through. And then I'm going to come back in and hit it. Okay. I think I've got it pretty much done. Last few elements on this side. And the design just pops out at you. Pergamano is beautiful and literally in just a matter, honestly, if I was doing this and not teaching you, it would take me no more than about five minutes to finish the whole thing and be done and start matting. Even if, even coloring doesn't take that long. But can you blend colors with the colored pencils on, on vellum? Yeah, you can. So I'm going to put this one aside, and I'm going to move that there. And I'm going to grab this guy. And then, my gosh, you could even take, let's see what looks good. You know me and my yellows. What if I wanted to... Hmm... I think that's not yellow enough. I don't know. Should I try pink? Oh, the pink is very pretty. Oh, the pink is really pretty. So this is that shimmer paper that we used to carry. And then I showed it on Facebook because I found it again. And then I was like, should we bring it back? Should we not bring it back? It's this highly iridescent paper. I mean, it really screams, hello, but you don't use it in a full size sheet. No, no, no. You use it in elements of, you use it in elements of. 
pretty. Really pretty. And it's got that glistening and that glow. Can you die cut with it? Yeah, you know what? Let's do that super quick before I move in. Let's just die cut with it. So, do we like that pink? Sure, let's cut into that pink again. And is this big enough? Look at that perfect size, almost like I planned it. Just so you can see it and go, oh, it's not as loud as I think it is. Because it is loud, there's no question about it. It screams, hello, I'm here, pay attention to me. <laughs> and then if I wanted to, I could take that one and open up my sticky dots. Right, open up my sticky dots. I'm opening up my sticky dots. Have you noticed I'm opening my sticky dots? There we go. Okay, one side is sticky dots. Sticky, the other side not so much. On this side, hundreds of thousands of little micro dots. I'm gonna go ahead and put my vellum down. I'm gonna close it up. I'm gonna rub, rub, rub. And anywhere that vellum touches those sticky dots, it's gonna, the sticky dots are gonna go with the vellum when I take it off. And anywhere where the vellum does not touch the sticky dots, like in the middle, those sticky dots are gonna stay there for you to use the next time. Peel it off. Have you had a hard time finding something that will let you put vellum down without seeing it? Sticky dots will let you do that. Put the vellum down without you seeing any type of adhesive behind it. And if I need to pull it up, I have a little bit of time before it come, becomes permanent. They will eventually go to a permanent adhesive. I still got a little bit of time. And bam, you tell me where the adhesive is, right? So pretty. Okay, so let's cut really quick with our sparkling sheets and our just so you can see that you can cut it. And send it on through. I've got my multi-purpose platform completely closed. My pre uh, precision base plate with the directions not facing me. Oh, little creaks and cracks are okay. I'm using sparkling sheets. You get 10 sheets. And it's an A4 size, so it's a little bit bigger than an eight and a half by 11. There's 10 different colors. It's not nearly as loud. <laughs> it's very pretty when used in the right context. If just putting a whole big sheet of it down, it's like, oh, but now it's like, oh, right? It's glitter without being glitter because it's not glittery at all. It's iridescent -y. It's shimmery. And, and, and like I said, with the 10 colors, there's even boy colors in here, darker colors, guy colors. It's their, oh, it's mermaid colors. Oh my gosh, the mermaid colors are beautiful. So they do die cut, just so you know. That paper die cuts without any problem. Okay, so then let's move on to this die. So this is another one of the new dies. Looks kind of busy. Uh, wait, you gotta wait till we cut it. And on the sparkling sheets, I just wanna show you the colors super fast. See mermaid color, ooh. Look at that green, oh my gosh. The colors are, they're beautiful. I don't wanna say magic again, but they're stunning. They're, 
a pop of a pop of ooh <laughs> in a paper a pop of awe in a paper and no matter how you look at it the color slightly changes when you rotate it so every time you look at it it's a little different and i was right we were able to get it at a much better price i'm really happy I want to say you get all 10 sheets also for $7.99, which is a much better price than I had it originally. So for that, I'm, I'm very thankful. Now, I'm going to grab another piece of my heavy vellum, parchment vellum. There is a difference. All vellums are not made the same. You can just hear how it cuts heavy. Bring over my, oh, I'm making a mess. Bring over my die cut machine. I'm not gonna change anything up. Multi-purpose platform completely closed. Precision base plate, regardless what version it is. Vellum, parchment vellum down. Die with the ridges against the vellum and then I'm gonna send it on through. Little creaks and cracks are fine. <laughs> I know, it sounds bad, but it isn't. It's cutting through the vellum. That's that noise, because vellum isn't a paper per se. It's a, like a hybrid paper plastic, so it's got to cut through that. That's why you have more noise with vellum than you do with regular paper. Let's see how we did. Pop that right off. Pull this out. Let's get rid of some of the pieces. Isn't that just a happy day when they just kind of all fall out? <laughs> see, that's the beauty also of a thick vellum is because it's more plasticky than anything else, the cuts cut, it just cuts beautifully. And the cuts are clean. Okay, so while it looks super busy there, what you actually end up with is there. Big difference, right? Here you can barely even tell what it is, but then side by side, ooh, and ah. But we haven't even played with the embossing aspect of it. Not yet, uh-uh, so I'm gonna put my paper over there. I'm gonna bring this back. I'm gonna put my die upside down. I'm gonna put my die cut back inside. It's gonna kind of click into place. And then let's grab my stylus tool. And I'm gonna just do a quick outline on some of these. Outline, outline, outline. Outline, outline, outline. Because what I wanted this to look like was ribbon, like a ruffle. I wanted it to have a ruffle look to it. So I want you to see the difference when it's um, when you've embossed it with a stylus versus not. Let's go all the way to center. Small one to kind of do an outline of the space and the big one to fill it in and push down into that gush pad or mouse pad, whatever your Doris pad, whatever stamping pad you've got. Um, magazines are not gonna, magazines are not gonna work. They don't have enough give. Okay. Let's 
So now it starts to look like a ruffle of ribbon around the top and the bottom. Let's do some of the center so you can see what that pattern looks like. Because that center doesn't just stay plain. Oh no. Do a few of these. I'll do the top one. Okay, I'm going with my larger ball to add that embossed element to it and to whiten that vellum all the way up. Remember, it's a parchment vellum. If you're overseas in the UK or um, in Europe, you have a much easier time finding parchment vellum than we do here in the US. Pergamano is still um, a pretty big craft over where you are. Over here, it's very hard to get, so that's why I had to make my own. Okay. Are you starting to see what it could be? And then we've got the butterfly. And there's embossing elements to the butterfly. What if we wanted to color the butterfly though? Remember I said we can color the butterfly. Do I want to do any of it embossed? Hmm. Let's do half embossed and half not. So I'm going to do one side of the butterfly body embossed with my stylus and I'm going to leave the other half of the body kind of plain. Okay, so I'm starting to detail it out. But if I want to color it, what do I do? Oh, not on the white. I'll never see it. <laughs> not on the white let's just go on the red all right I take my colored pencils again and I can go in there and let's just do some yellow and I'm gonna color my whole butterfly yellow because I like it as a base color I'm going over the embossed area the non embossed area and I'm just gonna add yellow 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 to my butterfly and I don't have to be pretty in my coloring because I'm going to take that Gamsol and smooth everything out. But I want a base color. And for me, yellow is the perfect base because you can mix blues and greens with it. You can mix reds and oranges with it. The only color that doesn't necessarily look good when you mix it with yellow is purple. <laughs> kind of makes mud. Okay, so I've just put down a bunch of yellow. And again, I was not I was not thinking about anything when I was coloring. It probably looks like a hot mess. It's just on there. That's all I care about. Then, ooh, let's take um Let's take a pretty blue and let's do some of the wing. And I'm going to take that blue and put it right over my yellow. And then maybe a dark, dark, dark blue. A dark blue.
Okay, so I've got some color going on. Not fabulous, but okay. Then let's make it fabulous. Let's take our Gamsol and our Stubby. Let me get some Gamsol in my tip. And how do you, what happens if you're using the yellow and then you wanna to go to the blue? How do you clean your Stubby? It comes with sanding paper. You literally sand the other color off. Let me see, do I have one with color? Oh, this one's got red. So if I wanted to get rid of that red, I literally just take the sandpaper that comes in the kit. And make a nice point until that red is gone. Because it's just paper. And then when you're done with that, if that sandpaper stops sanding for you, you go to the next one and pull it off and you've got You've got lots and lots of sheets of sandpaper to go through. I have yet to use one of these in its entirety. And you just sand that down because it's only paper until your color's gone and you're ready to start with your next color. So let's come over here and let's get some Gamsol and, and let's just blend. And you can turn it over and you can say, do I want more color? I don't know. Do I want more color? Maybe I want more color. So then I add more color. I can go back in with my pencil. Oh, I forgot which one I used. <laughs> I can go back in and add more color to darken it. Yes, I'm on the right side. <laughs> But when you start with a base color down first, it's so lovely. A little Gamsol. And I'm just gonna smooth that color out. Now I'm not so much trying to blend it because I've already blended the initial color. I'm just trying to darken it up and smooth it out just a little bit. So now I'm darker. And again, you've got that beautiful embossed on black paper. What do we think? Yay, nay, I'm not sure. I can't tell. I don't know. Too much for me, Stacy. Too much information. Oh, I'm going to have to watch this YouTube again. <laughs> Oh, now you know how my brain works sometimes. <laughs> I can pop this right back into place and just continue on. Now, what if I did all of these? Let's get all of these done. And I'm just taking the small one just to kind of outline it and get into the nooks and crannies of the corners where that big, uh, the big stylus tip can't fit. I love these dies. The Pergamono dies are probably some of my most favorite that I ever get to design. I love the options that they give you. I love the look that it renders when it's done. Nobody needs to know that it didn't take you three weeks to make that card. They're gonna wonder how you did it don't tell them. <laughs> if you sell your cards at your workplace, well, charge extra for these because you can get it. <laughs> They're just absolutely beautiful. So I'm using my large ball just to go in there and fill in the rest of the detail and push that 
vellum down and make it white. Right? It's beautiful. But what if you wanted to color on the back of that? Can you do it? Sure, absolutely. We've got blue right here. Let's just take our blue right here. I could just color right on the back. Color right on the back. I'm coloring on top of the um, vellum that I just turned white. So I've got some color on there. Take my Gamsol, take my Stubby. Spread it around, soften it up. And I've started to color. So pretty. And then, and then, <laughs> the other thing that works so good, oh my gosh, what did I do with it? The other thing that works so good with vellum are paint pins. Okay, so the paint pin wasn't supposed to be in this YouTube until Marvie came out with a new color. So we usually have the gold, the silver, and the copper. Can you say hello to rose gold? So this is brand new. Nobody has it yet. Oh, just a little bit of happiness. And I could take, um, I could take, let's take a piece of my black paper. Let's take a black paper. That way I can see what I'm doing. Good. So black paper. I just cut this so I can make like a little, um, a, a little guide here to cover up what I don't want the paint pin to get onto because again paint pin dries really fast isn't going to curl your vellum gold silver copper and now rose gold we're only going to have the rose gold on sale because most of you already own the gold silver and the copper remember the paint pin has this beautiful chiseled edge beautiful chiseled edge you want to keep that edge. You want to work it like this, not like this. Do not stick it in the middle of your paper in the middle. I Just don't ruin your edge that way. People will make a little cut in there so that they can edge easier, but then you're forever got a little split in your tip. And if you want to do something besides that, you've got a, it, just, just don't do it. So, and when your paint pin comes, you've got to shake it up and it's going to come. That tip is going to be completely white. You're gonna to have to press it down ooh, until you get some of the paint going. You can see I just did that. It's beautiful and this is their new color, rose gold. I saw it, I ordered it before I even had a chance to play with a sample. Oh, and that was supposed to be my piece. Okay, well, zoop. just so it can dry. I mean, really, right? Yum. Okay, so if I take this and I put this here, so I can mask off what I'm trying to not ink. And then I take my paint pen and on an angle, not straight up and down, but on an angle. Now this does have a little bit of a smell. Oh, I got a lot of paint from doing that. I can add a perfect edge to my vellum. If you've got the gold, silver, and copper, give it a whirl. It just adds that finishing little edge. It's 
So vellum doesn't have to stay plain old vellum anymore. Not when you're using a heavyweight vellum. You're given so many more options. And when you're using embossing tools, embossing stencils, you want to emboss it with your squishy and your knock knock. You need the right dies to do it and the right weight vellum. And then if you want to color your vellum, same thing. You've got to use the right tools. You saw what happened when I added water. So anything with a water base to it, any ink. Vellum is a hybrid. It's plasticky paper. So you can't stamp it with memento. It's just going to wipe off. It's never going to dry. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry, but this is so pretty. I want to finish it, but I won't. <laughs> But I want to. <laughs> but I won't. <laughs> You're like, thank goodness, Stacy. <laughs> but how can you see just what it can be? Uh, I just want to finish it, but I won't. And on the back side, you can see that it's much more vibrant. The color softens when we turn it over. You really can't make a mistake because you're working on the back side. You just can't. You can do this. I promise you. I made these dies so easy to use. And if you already have colored pencils, use your colored pencils. The Gamsol is really what makes a huge difference. And if you don't have colored pencils, well, we brought these in from Germany. They're, uh, they are beautiful. And they're reasonably priced. It, it, again, Royal Talons is a, um, a fine art company that, I mean, they just have beautiful things. So I thought I would try them and the girls went crazy for them and they have a set of 12, 24, and 36. So we have those for you. It makes my heart happy. And then the paint pen. Yeah, see, my heart says Stacy. just, so I think when I'm all done YouTubing, I will go back because I just am that person and I can't not, not finish. It'll drive me crazy because I know it will be beautiful when it's done and I'll just do the blue on the other side because you know, you've got this side down here that has the ruffly too. So when you're all done, the ruffle is on both the top and the bottom. Just quickly outline, quickly outline, quickly outline, and away we go. All right, we did a lot today. So this, this detail goes all the way around this detail goes all the way around. This detail can be done on this side of the butterfly. You have options. I hope you like them. And if you don't, don't tell me. I will never know. <laughs> Gosh, and then you could. Oh, okay. It looks really good on that. It does, and I wonder how it will look on. I wonder if this is too blue. Ugh. Yeah, you lose the blue. It needs to be on a lighter. Definitely on the lighter. Oh yeah, it looks so much better there. Oh, so pretty. So. All right, what did we do today? Well, we started with just playing, well, we started talking about the different vellums and there is a difference. Heavyweight, heavyweight versus lightweight. And the fact that there was an oopsie, so you're gonna get, if you buy the heavyweight vellum, you're also gonna get a 10 pack of the lightweight vellum for free. I've got it, I need it to go, I don't wanna resell it, um, that's wrong. It was given to me for free. I need to give it to you for free. 
I don't agree with when when you <laughs> when you're given something that you then turn it for a profit. That's not who I am. So it was a mistake. They gave it to me as a free gift. I'm going to give it to you as a free gift and that's the right thing to do. So if you buy the vellum, you get both. And then we talked about the different different types of dies and what you do with the dies when the dies don't have that piece that cuts out. It's like, why did they put that design in there if it doesn't cut out? It's an embossing feature that you can then go ahead and use with the vellum or a squishy and a knock knock and color uh, core paper. And can you color vellum? Well, I have clearly shown you that you can color vellum and it can be beautiful. And the Pergamono look with that lacy look throughout the whole thing just elevates your card making or your scrapbooking or your altered art or your mixed media without anybody knowing that you did it with a die versus a light box and <laughs> they don't need to know, don't tell them. And then to add just that extra element of a little bit of color here and there to make it pop if that's what you want. Okay, so let me show you, let me show you what is on sale and then let me show you the stunning samples that the girls have made, truly. Okay, so we've got the sparkling shimmer sheets. Smoking hot price, it just is. Amazing price. I want to say it's $7.99, I think, and then we took 20% off. I was not able to get it for that price when I was doing it, and I am thrilled to have it for that price now. SMS Girl Sharon uses this paper on everything, and she had to hoard it because I didn't, I lost the manufacturer. I didn't know where to get it from. And when I finally got it, oh my gosh, I sent her a couple packs of it, and I got a phone call of, ha! She was so happy. She, she was so happy. Then we've got the parchment. And remember, you're going to get two. One's going to be heavy like this, and one's going to be light like this. They're going to come together. You're actually getting the heavyweight is what you need and what we will continue to go forward with. The lightweight is the oopsie. And once it's gone, it's gone. But we will keep the bundle together as long as I still have the lightweight. So you're going to get that. That's not on an additional discount. This is my product. It's already as low as I possibly can make it. Then we have the Gamsol kit. If you do any kind of colored pencils, not watercolor pencils, but colored pencils, you need this Gamsol kit because remember, it smooths it on out. Don't know what I did with that little piece of sample somewhere. I know it's here somewhere, but couldn't tell you where of that red little piece that let me smooth it on out. Yeah, oh, well. I'll find it after I've turned the camera off, right? <laughs> of course I will. <laughs> Is it behind there? No. Gamsol. Amazing with colored pencils. Then, like I said, we've got the colored pencils in from uh, a new company out of Germany, Fine Art Material. So you're using beautiful quality pencils. The 12, the 24, the 36. Do you need them if you already have colored pencils? No, try your colored pencils first. And if they work beautifully, then don't, don't spend more money than you need to on things you already have. This is the 36 set that I've been using. I'm not gonna even try to pronounce the name. I'm not. <laughs> I know my my weaknesses and my strengths. That's not one of them. <laughs> I did the, we've got the beautiful rose gold. So if you just wanted to add this to your collection, if that's the only thing you took away from this YouTube is that there's a new rose gold paint pin. Okay, I'm good with that too. And we've got the stylus for you. Just in case you don't already have one and it's value priced at like $2.89. And the, micro dots which are going to allow you to adhere your vellum to your paper without ever seeing any any of the adhesive 
I almost feel like these are post-it notes, like I or white out, like like I wished I had invented them. I really do. I had to go find them, but I found them, and um, and and they made them the way I wanted. And it, it, well, yes, they made it. Well, I'd like to color them now that I know you guys would like them to be in color, but I can't do that. It's they want way too many. And then last but not least, we have my dies. So I'm gonna tilt. I'm gonna go on back, 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 back. And I'm gonna go. Oh, don't turn off, please. Okay, so that way you can see. All right, so. <laughs> That is this die right here. Now, Elena cut it just out of paper. She cut it out of vellum. She cut it out of heavyweight gold paper that embossed it all on its own. And then she inked it. Uh-huh, one die. A2 size, ready for your card. $13.99 or, and you get the word hello, or if you buy the I Want It All, you get it for nine uh, for about 10 bucks. It's $59.99 for the set. Then we have my little lady. And here she is. So there you have her, plain paper, vellum, embossed with a gold heavyweight paper and then inked. She's so cute. And then you have my apple picker in her bonnet. Paper, vellum, gold, inked. You got options, baby. <laughs> You've got options with these dies. Look at the embossing. Look at her little petticoat. With the heavier paper, it picks all that up. You don't have to sand or anything. It's got all of that beautiful embossing of her dress. I am very picky about my dies. Right or wrong, I am. Um, then we've got my frame up right here. Turn it around. My frame with a floral center so that you, here it is in paper, you get two pieces. They're in vellum, here in beautiful gold paper, and here it is inked. So you can use the flowers with the frame, you can use the frame without the flowers, it's up to you, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna ink it? Do you just want to use a heavier paper so that embossing, where that embossing element is, it comes through? Do you want to make it look Pergamono-ish? What do you want to do? Then we have the one I was working with for today, which when you look at it, it's like, oh, I don't think so, until you look at it. And you're like, oh, I think so. See, they look like ruffles. I needed it to look like ruffles. It was so, I don't know why it was so important to me that it looked like ruffles, but it, it just, it was. Mm, I love that die. And then the last one I was working with today, which is the roses. And I don't know why I had to have this shape, but I did. I just loved the shape. So well, paper vellum gold and inked so those are my six i want it all dies and then let's look at samples so let's start with belinda Here we have Belinda and she used a shimmer. She was playing with shimmer. And this is Belinda because it's Belinda. You know it's Belinda when you see it. <laughs> okay, Belinda. <laughs> and here. She 
she just she is all into herself and here she's layered them she's stacked them and cut them and decoupaged them god bless her because she looks at things in a different way than i do and that's what makes crafting so amazing is that you may have your style and your friend has her style and you appreciate all of it not everybody is the same how beautiful is that love that okay Belinda then we go to Claire and she just a little bit of fabulous this is Claire Isn't that pretty? If you don't agree, that's okay. I don't know. You could be saying, no, Stacy, it's not. That's okay. I don't hear you. <laughs> oh, look at the detail in that. Look at all the cuts. Oh, my heart be still. The more detailed they are, the more I love them. And then the last one from Claire, again, she cut out of um, a heavier uh, silver paper where it did the embossing on its own because the paper was heavy enough and she didn't use her, or she didn't use vellum at all. She just die cut. Then we have Elena. Okay, Elena, where's the box? Where's the light up something? <laughs> now Elena used the center this piece here is the fallout of the frame so the next one I'm going to show you is the frame and this is the fallout piece that most people throw away and she took the flowers and mounted it right on there this is Elena so this The piece on the other one was this fallout piece. And here they've popped them and they've decoupaged them and layered them. So pretty. And this is Elena. And I love this one. Oh my gosh, I do. She offset the she offset the pink and she colored with the pencils on the yellow and oh. I love this one, Elena. This is stunning. It really is stunning. So when I mean she offset the pink paper so that it made a slight shadow. So she just took the papers and just kind of stacked them like this as opposed to right on top of each other so that that they just came through Elena beautiful work beautiful work oh Elena so pretty and then her <laughs> oh my gosh what do we think of her She's so sophisticated, honestly, she is. And the one that I used today. And then she took the frame and she went horizontal with it. And last but not least, we have Doris. again oh my gosh so simple and so pretty I just love the shape of that die all done with the vellum
vellum. Vellum. And then her last one. No vellum. But ooh la la. Talk about sophisticated. So if you like the Pergamano look, use the vellum. If it's not for you, you can die cut them. You have options. All right, I'm going to tilt up and I'm going to tilt back way back, way back. Hello. All right, you guys. So we went over a lot today. We did. And we've got that two. Well, it's not a twofer. It's a bonus for you with the vellum because of the oopsie. And please remember that simply to find well, when they're gone, they're gone unless somebody canceled their order or doesn't pay for it. So I, I can only afford to bring in so many, and I do. I bring in as much as I can. And if you like the Pergamano look and you want to look at some of the older dice, which very well could be on sale, they're either under Nana's Garden or Nana's Friendship. This is Nana Sampler. So you've got three collections to look from that will all do the same type of thing. And I want to welcome Royal Talons to Scrapbooking Made Simple. And so far, loving your your, your colored pencils, Wahoo Kachu. And I am so excited to bring back the shimmer paper that we lost so many years ago. It's back, and it's back at a price point that ah, I'm happy about. So where are you going to find all of this product? Well, a lot of it you're only going to find here, like the Simply Botanical and the Simply Defined. So that you have to shop with us because they're exclusive to us. But you may be able to find uh, colored pencils at your local store. You may, well, you can't find the heavy parchment either. But, <laughs> so a lot of this is us this week. But, <laughs> by all means, if they've got adhesive for your vellum, go, go and visit your local mom and pop shop and say hello. Introduce yourself. Say, we're so glad you're open and that you survived so far, COVID-19, I am so sure that they would be thrilled to meet you. All right, me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. I will see you all next week. Oh yeah, it's good too. <laughs> I was trying to remember what it is, but oh. <laughs> okay, you guys, bye. <laughs>